So we have done exploratory data analysis and inferential statistics as of now. Inferential statistics hypothesis testing we have done. We are moving to the next step, which is data pre-processing. Data pre-processing is the most critical challenge of the data science project. You will spend 95% of your time cleaning up the data only. The most difficult and the most complicated task is the data pre-processing. So I will broadly discuss some data pre-processing tasks which are used generally in data, but each data has its own problems. We cannot standardize the pre-processing. It depends on the data you are going to receive and the type of data you are going to work upon, whether it is a numerical data, categorical data, or text data or images, pre-processing is different. We will work on all the types of pre-processing during the curriculum. Today, we will work on multivariate data pre-processing, multivariate data. Multivariate means both numerical and categorical data. In a multivariate data, you will have numerical data, categorical data, as well as character data or object, and you also have dates. Dates also required pre-processing. So data pre-processing is one of the biggest challenge of data science and the success or the failure of the project depends on how effectively you process the data. Your data pre-processing will decide the success or failure of the project. So you need to be very, very thorough with your data pre-processing steps and you need to be very careful when you are dealing with data pre-processing. While you download, let me start with the theoretical part of data. All of you can see the font size or you want me to increase a little bit. All three files, train file, test file, and sample submission file. All the three files you have to download. Under problem statement, you will have. Once you register only, you will see the data. Once you click on the register using your Gmail ID, scroll to the bottom of problem statement, you will see the data. And in problem statement, you will see the detailed explanation of the data. Is the font says okay? So data pre-processing for multivariate for multivariate data we are going to discuss certain pre-processing techniques the first and foremost is the first thing is you need to check for duplicate columns or variables so using the info command we need we have to identify there are any and delete them accordingly we have to delete them single value variables or columns single value columns or that means all the in the variable single value so sometimes you have this single value columns all the values in that particular column will be single single value all ones will be there that's all no other value will be there or all zeros will be there you can find them using the describe function you can find them using the describe function where the min if all of them are zero, then it's a single value column. Or if it all of them are one, it's a single value column. For this, all of you, the biggest challenge, missing values imputation. Missing values imputation or how to deal with missing values. In real time data science, you will have missing values. So missing values, systems failure or sensor gets failed or system fails to capture the data. That is one reason. Failure in data entry. So missing values keep on occurring in the real-time data because of broadly, these are the three important reasons. Systems failure, failure in the data entry, or failure due to negligence. Fill that or don't collect it. We've, negligence is another part of the problem in data. Or we cannot say negligence, or what we say is, People don't want to give it. It can be negligence on part of the employees or it can be customers not, not interested in giving the, take for example, Uber ratings. Uber algorithm relies heavily on driver rating. In Ola, they will not force you to give driver ratings, but in Uber, you have to give them, right? The first thing is you have to give rating and then you go to the next step. Nowadays, they have add, added that skip or minimize, but earlier, Without giving the rating to the previous ride, you can't book the, because Uber algorithm is dependent on driver ratings. The drivers will get incentives, bonuses, or uh, additional rides based on the, so you have to, but will all customers give ratings? People don't want to give ratings. If they had a bad experience, they don't want to give rating at all. They avoid it. People sometimes don't want it because of their personal reasons. They just don't 
do it. In Ola, they never, they don't seriously ask. They ask, Kola also ask, but Ola is not that dependent on ratings. Whereas Uber algorithm is heavily dependent on ratings given by the customers. Those customer drivers who have higher ratings will get higher, uh, what you call, fair rights. They get rights faster and their bookings will be generally faster. Otherwise, uh, people who have low ratings, they have to wait for hours for getting a booking. So that is how the algorithm will decide priority of assigning the rights. So you need to understand that missing values constantly keep up propping in the data. Missing values greater than 70% or variable, it's better to impute if a column has huge, more than 70% of the column is missing, 80%, 90% of the column has, we cannot impute. It's better to impute with the word missing or not available. Impute with the word missing or not available. That is the first criteria. How do I deal with missing values? First, I check how much is the percentage. Is the percentage of missing values greater than 70% or less than 70%? If it is greater than 70% of that particular column, we will not impute it. Rather, we will impute with the word missing or not available. And you have to impute it because we can't keep them blank. We have to impute it Otherwise, the algorithm will not take it. So we will impute it with the word missing or not available. If it is numerical data, if it is numerical data, missing code is generated. A value which is not there in the range, 9999 nine, 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 something, which will tell us that means it's a, it should not be in the range. It should not be in the range. It has to be beyond the range. 999, 999, four times, five times, something you give at, as um, some people give zeros, zero, 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 like that. Because it tells us that it is a missing value. For numerical, you have to keep the data as numerical, right? Text or character data. So you have to create a numerical missing code. You have to create a numerical missing code because the data is numerical in nature. So the missing code should also be in numerical format only. If it is character data or text data or uh, categorical data, we can use the word. Then we will do label encoding. It will be taken as one specific category. Now, if missing values are less than 70% of the column or variable, imputation, if it is a numerical variable, mean or median imputation, you will impute the missing value with the mean of the column or the median of the column. If it is categorical, non-numeric, categorical, most frequent or mode imputation is manual imputation. The specific or mode is used for imputation and do not, do not consider the impact of other on missing value. So in manual imputation, in manual imputation, we will only consider that specific columns mean, median or mode. We will not consider the impact of other variables on that particular missing value. We will, it will not consider the impact of other values or other variable values on that particular missing value in manual imputation. It's just a manual method where we have to impute it with mean, median or mode or most frequent. Now, if you want to use other columns impact, if you want to take into consideration other variables impact on the missing value and then impute it, we have to use algorithm based missing value imputation. Algorithm based missing value imputation. The impact of other variables on the missing value and imputes algorithm-based missing value imputation. There are algorithms developed which will help you to do missing value imputation. In manual, you have to calculate the mean or you have to use the mean or median and then do it. In this case, it uses algorithms like multiple linear regression, binary logistic regression, or decision tree, or random forest. Algorithms are used for imputing missing values. One of the most popular algorithm is multivariate imputation, multivariate imputation chained equations, also called as MICE algorithm, which imputes numerical, categorical simultaneously. 
mice is a very very popular algorithm in data science for doing algorithm based missing value imputation using chained equations now this is a very very important algorithm which you need to understand when you are looking at uh, i'm running the new mac os ventura but well, what's this the old we have missing values in age income and gender there are three variables there are missing values in age income and gender now for age and income it will do mean imputation for age and gender it will do mean imputation it will calculate the mean and impute it with mean and for categorical it will use mode or most frequent imputation then it will make age back to missing value it will make age as missing value then it will build a linear regression model with age as dependent variable income and gender as independent variables and in multiple linear regression process you will also get predictions after you build the model automatically the algorithm will also generate predicted values and using that predicted values using the predicted values which are generated by the linear regression algorithm the imputation will be done the predicted value will be generated and that predicted value will be used as okay then second instance it will take income and make the missing value as missing then it will make income as independent variable and age and gender as independent variables income as dependent variable age and gender as independent variables and then builds a linear regression and forecast the predictions and the prediction value will be replaced whereas in case of gender gender is categorical it will build a binary logistic regression and it will predict the class based on the class prediction you it will predict and replace it with the predicted so this process is continued till the algorithms are uh, till the missing values are imputed mice is a very popular algorithm which is used in real time data science also for imputing missing values multivariate imputation using chain equation each time the algorithm iterates the dependent variable will change the dependent variable will the will be the variable that has the missing variables missing values and the other variables will be taken as independent variables in mice you can choose your algorithm you want it to be linear regression it will use linear regression and logistic regression if you use decision tree which can be used for both regression and classification it will use decision tree as the algorithm for prediction you can use random forest you can use gbm gradient boosting you can use neural networks for imputations so mice is a very very popular algorithm for doing missing value in python it is under experimental it will be implemented from the next version of sklearn it is called iterative imputer in python it is called as iterative imputer it is called iterative imputer which will be which is available now on beta version we can use it as of now and it will be fully available from the next version of sklearn so in algorithm based imputation the primary algorithm is mice so in python sklearn we call it as iterative imputer this algorithm was first developed in r software in r it is very advanced in r it is very very advanced and it is very fast also in r so r developed this algorithm r guys and then it is now being implemented in python also the second imputer is knn imputer k nearest neighbors algorithm k nearest neighbors algorithm which is a very popular algorithm in data science using euclidean distance using euclidean distance what is euclidean distance distance between two points distance between two point square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square so using euclidean distance and based on the nearest neighbors the closest neighbors imputation will be done imputation is based on this is also impute but the problem with knn imputer is knn imputer only on numeric data because euclidean distance cannot be calculated for categorical data it can be done only on numerical data points euclidean distance is calculated between numerical data points it cannot be done on categorical data points so knn imputer if you have all your variables are numerical in nature or if your missing values are only numerical data points then you can use knn imputer there are other algorithms which are not available in python principal component analysis uh, in the machine learning workbenches um, both in aws and azure microsoft azure and uh, amazon aws and google gcp also 
in the machine learning workbenches, we have this algorithm, probabilistic PCA, which uses principal component analysis, which is a dimensionality reduction algorithm for imputing missing values. This also is there, but predominantly used is MICE. MICE is also available in cloud-based ML. In all cloud, all the three cloud-based MLs, AWS, GCP, and Azure, you had MICE. MICE is the default missing value imputation in all the three cloud-based ML workbenches. So this is the process of dealing with missing values, manual method and algorithm method. Manual method and algorithm method will implement both. So this is very, very challenging task. This is the biggest task. What imputations you have to done? We'll work on different scenarios where we'll work on simple data where 10, 12 variables are missing values, where we'll work on data where 40, 50 variables and different types of variables, categorical, character, object, numerical, date, all sorts of missing values will be. So missing values in a real time data are there and in competitions also, they will give hackathons and jobathons, missing values will be there. And you have to use the right strategy for imputing them. Okay, can we move forward? The fourth and one of the important step is data transformation. Data transformation is we will where we will transform or resize the range of values. Data transformation, data transformation or transformation the transforming the data itself, complete transformation of the data will be done. Or we will completely reshape or resize the data into a specific data range. Now, on dependent variable, dependent variable represented by, what is the dependent variable? Dependent variable is our target variable or the variable which we are dependent variable. Take for example, in Big Mart sales prediction, if you go to the problem statement, see, it is given as item outlets sales. This is the outcome variable to be predicted. The variable which we are need to be predicted that we call it as dependent variable. The variable which needs to be predicted. The whole purpose of the model is to predict that particular dependent variable. We will get it in problem statement. See here, the aim is to build a predictive model and predict the sales of each product at particular outlet. In the problem statement, it will be clearly given what is the objective of your machine learning uh, machine learning model building or your data analysis. The client will specify it most of the times. If the client does not specify it, you have to propose the important variables and take approval of client and start working on those variables for which we need domain knowledge. Recently, one of the previous batch student called up. He got uh, online betting, online betting data. They are given a startup data of online betting. He's working for Capgem. He didn't know what is the dependent variable. Now, because he doesn't play online betting games, he doesn't know. People who know online betting games, what is the important variable? The betting amount and wins and losses. First is the betting amount and second is the wins and losses, whether the win happened or loss happened. So if it is betting amount, it becomes a regression model. If it is win or lose, it becomes a classification model. So he has to go through the data. Lot of information is given for him to work upon like age, gender, location, how many times he has betted, how many amounts he has betted, last betted amount, how frequently he is betting, amount size, all the data is there. He has some close to 90 variables of data is there. And he has to study either the betting amount or the win or loss percentage. Win or loss percentage will be there. For every player, they'll calculate the win percentage as well as loss percentage. How many times he has won? How many times he has lost the money? So you need to have certain amount of domain knowledge to understand the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is the variable which is the critical variable in data science. The variable which you are asked to predict. You need to predict using a machine learning model or a deep learning. So if you are dealing with de dependent variable Y and if it is a regression problem, you know, regression problem and outliers, you have skewness and outliers, which are the problematic. So what you have to do is, if it is positive skewness, we will take do logarithmic transformation. That means we will calculate the log values of each of the numeric value and take it as our value. Logarithmic transformation, natural logarithm, log to the base of 10. 
that we have tried it on uh, box plot and all, right? NP dot log and all. So positive skewness, logarithmic transformation or transformation. For negative skewness, the opposite is exponential. Exponential transformation or power transformation. So if your dependent variable y is numerical and continuous, regression is used when when y is numerical and continuous. Y is numerical normal distribution and no missing values we can use regression when your dependent variable is numerical continuous closer to normal distribution with minimum outliers and no missing values we can use regression models we can use regression models and when you are looking at it skewness will be a biggest now when you do skewness correction your outliers are also your outliers will also be so when you are looking at regression problems, the biggest challenge is skewness and kurtosis and outliers in the dependent variable. We need to handle them. And outliers, there are a lot of methods. People say you can drop them. No, we can't drop outliers. Sometimes we have to work with outliers. We can't cap them also. Capping means what? Replacing the value with some other value. That also cannot be done. Take, for example, retail sales. You are trying to, you have thousands of stores. Will all stores have same sales? No, right? Some will have exceptionally high sales. Some will have exceptionally, that means they're outliers, right? There will be some stores which will do very, very high. Some will do very, very bad. You will have outliers. Definitely you'll have outliers. Should we replace the higher value stores with average or medium? That will distort our... So what we have to do? We have to look for models. We have to look for machine learning algorithms or models that are not sensitive to outliers. There are models which are not affected by outliers we will use those models we will avoid those models which are affected by so outliers are very very challenging thing you need to understand the importance of outliers in most of the times the outliers are important sometimes they come up because of the data errors or some errors you have to study the outliers and if you think they are very important and they have a validity for existing valid reason for existing you cannot do anything with them you have to work with you have to work with outliers. YouTube statistics. There are some videos which have billions of, there will be videos which have zero views. Statistics. YouTube have billions of videos. Some videos have billions of like uh, pop stars, music star, celebrity videos. They have billions and millions of views. There will be videos, nobody looks at them. Zero views or simply one view, two views. Like that, there will be outliers, right? Extremes will be always there in data. So we have to be very careful when you are dealing with such type of data. The second instance is where your dependent variable y classification problem is, let us say, non-numeric and either your dependent variable is non-numeric and either binary, yes or no, multinomial. Multinomial means more than two levels. Then classification, if your dependent variable is non-numeric, Either binary, binary means yes or no, or multinomial, more than two. Let us say you are predicting sentiments, positive sentiment, neutral sentiment, negative sentiment, multinomial, more than two are there. You are predicting loan default, customer defaulted on loan, yes or customer paid credit card bill, yes or no. When your dependent variable is non-numeric, either binary, yes or no or true or false, or multinomial. Multinomial means more than two levels. It can be three, it can be four. In advanced models, 10. Like you're trying to predict zero to nine digits will be there, na? In numbers, you have zero to nine. You have images, handwritten images of digits are there. You have to predict which image is what digit. So there, how many predictions are making? 10 predictions you are making. Zero to 10. 10 predictions you have to. So multinomial, Classification problems are also there. Take, for example, COVID X-rays. Chest X-rays is done, not normal X-ray, X-ray, or chest infection, lung infection, X-ray. Four types of things which are being classified now. Lung infection, COVID, or pneumonia. The algorithms will find from the X-ray what is the type of disease the patient is suffering from. They have built it. Now it is having almost 85 to 90% accuracy 
GE and Philips and all those devices, which are X-ray devices, models built and implemented. Okay, when we do image processing and deep learning, we will also work on this X-ray images. And we will also try to build advanced neural network models to predict what type of image is that X-ray belongs to. Now, in this case, imbalanced data is the biggest problem. Imbalanced data is biggest problem. Take, for example, credit card default is your dependent variable. You have, yes, 9,200 observations or let us say 9,000 observa uh, 9, observations are yes and no, no are 9,000, yes are 1,000. Yes means the customer did not pay the bill. Default, no means the customer has paid his bill on time. Now, there is a big difference between no and s. 90% is no, 10% is, this we call it as imbalance data. Now, what happens in imbalance data is, the prediction for 90% no will be very good. The prediction for 90% no will be very good. But when you are predicting for this, yes, 1000, it will be very, very bad. The accuracy of prediction for minority class will be very, very the accuracy of prediction of majority class. Majority class is what? 9,000? 9, no. Majority class prediction will be good. Minority class prediction will be bad. Minority class is the problem here. Minority class, which is yes, not even bad. It will be very, very. So what we have to use? We have to do power sampling means duplicate records from no and make it equal to 9,000 of yes. Power sample means we'll copy paste the rows from no repeatedly duplication of rows from no category and we will make it equal to 9000 or under sampling in under sampling what we will do is we will randomly select 1000 records from and we will delete all the other 8000 make it equal to under sampling and over sampling these techniques need to be implemented so we will discuss this also imbalance data same most of the real-time classification problems are imbalanced data problem. Credit card fraud. Will all customers fraud? 90% will pay them, right? Only 10% customers will loan problems, loan frauds or loan defaults also. 12% will, as per most of the banks, 12 to 15% are don't pay. 85% will pay them on. So there is always an imbalance. In gambling also, will everybody win? The house always wins, right? No matter what, it's all depending on luck. House will always win. 90% is house, 10% is same thing. Insurance also, will all customers claim? No, right? Only 10 to 12, 15% customers will claim. 85% or 80% customers will not claim. If all 100% customers fail, means the insurance company will go. That's what happens in earthquakes, disasters and all, no? There are no cyclones. As long as there are no earthquakes, as long as there are no typhoons in the world, Warren Buffett will be the richest man because he is the insurer of the world. He owns the company called uh, Berkshire has, you know, Berkshire is, uh, uh, yeah, Berkshire has one of the subsidiary called General Ari, which is the insurer for insurer's companies. Insurer of insurer's companies. There are two companies in the world. One, Warren Buffett's General Ari and Lloyd's Insurance in London. These are the two companies that insure the insurance companies. Insurance companies are like LIC. They'll sell the policies to you. Again, they'll take insurance from these companies. As long as you don't have any natural disasters, mass death situations, Warren Buffett will be the richest man. Because no claims means what? He'll keep the premium with him, right? So insurance is the most profitable business in the world. Insurance is one of the most profitable business in the world. Because people don't claim. People make more claims than your company will be in medical. That's what happened with medical uh, insurances in India. In US, medical insurance is very strict. In India, government allows all types of medical insurances. All the medical insurance companies went into losses. So state governments give, na? RIP3, that three, that all the sorts of programs they launched, they bankrupted the health insurance companies. Now, nobody talks about those government health schemes because all the companies said they will not give those. So when you are looking at classification, you have to be very careful of imbalanced, right? Any doubts? Independent variables, data transformations of independent variables denoted by capital X. Capital X independent variables are in mathematical x1 is in lakhs 
x2 variable 2 is in thousands x3 variable is in x4 variable is in is discrete discrete variable discrete value multiple mathematical units when you have data you must do data must be the price of the house will be in lakhs right the price of the house is in 80 lakhs 70 lakhs like that with the price will be in lakhs how do you measure size of the house 1400 sft 1200 sft that means 1400 sft 1200 sft 1000 thousands how will you measure the parking space 100 feet or to, like, what you call uh, you say only 50 feet space is given for your parking how will you measure 20 sft 10 sft like that how many you measure number of bedrooms two bedrooms three and a, two and a half bedrooms three bedrooms how many bathrooms two bathrooms like you have different mathematical units when you have data like this in different mathematical units you must do scaling now the first important scaling is standard scalar. Standard scalar, also called as standard I, where we calculate of each observation. What is the formula of z-score? X minus mean divided by standard deviation. We will calculate for, first we will calculate the column mean and observe, uh, standard deviation. And then we calculate for each observation x minus mean divided by standard deviation. This is called standard scaling or standardization, which will give negative values in a specific, say, minus 5 to 5 or minus 3 to 3, depending upon the size of the value you have. It can be minus 5 to 5, minus 3 to 3. So scaling will be both positive and negative. You will get both positive values as well as you will get your negative, also called as normalization. The formula is x minus, that means each column's min value, x max minus x, min max scalar or normalization. All values in the range of 0 to 1, you get only positive, you get only positive values. Min max scalar is widely used in image processing because we don't want negative values in image processing. Pixel values, you know, images 0 to 255. In images, when you convert them into pixels, it will be in the range of 0 to 255. So we don't want negative values there. So there will be some situations where you want only positive values and you also want them into a specific range of 0 to 1. Computation will be easy. Calculations will be is so min max scalar or normalization where we will use when we want only positive values and we also want values in a particular range of 0 to 1 only all the values will be between 0 to 1 only 0 included 1 included 0 included 1 included only that range you will not get any other values within this range only you will get the values the second one is robust scalar x minus q2 divided by q3 minus data has when your independent variables numerical data has then you have to use robust robust scalar is used when you have outliers in your data when your model performance or you are not able to build a model because of this outliers problem in the independent variables then you have to use robust scalar so these are the three typical scalars we have other scalars also we have three four other types of scalars also available but these are the three important scalars that we use in business in real time data science we use these three types of independent variables non numeric object or so one other thing is in machine learning and data science text needs to be converted to numbers for the algorithms to work upon text has to be converted to numbers assigning numerical identifiers to you have to assign numerical dummy variable encoding we call this as dummy variable there should not be a single character or object data before you send the data to the algorithm if there is any single character available in your data your algorithm will simply fail and say string found so there should not be any text or characters or string values in your data. You should convert all of them into numerical identifiers. This process, we call it as dummy variable encoding. 
Now, there are different types of encoding available. The predominantly used one is label encoder, which encodes object or categorical data by assigning identifiers from zero n levels or classes in alphabetical order. Very important interview question. Label encoder. Label encoder assigns numerical identifiers starting from zero to as many levels are there in that particular variable, that many numbers will be assigned in alphabetical order. It does not take the frequency counts into consideration. It takes the alphabetical order and then it will assign. Take for example, we have gender and male, male and male. This is the actual data we have. We can't push this data directly into algorithm. We have to do dummy variable encoding. What label encoder will do is, which will come first, M or F? F comes first. So M will be 1, F will be 0, 1 and 1. So 0 and 1 is what it uses to encode them. So we will, once you run the label encoder, the data will change from M and Fs to 1s and zeros. And in the back end, it will also retain the property that it is a categorical. It will not treat them as numbers. The algorithm will not treat them as numbers. It will treat them as categories. It will treat them as categories, not as numbers. Now, the second type of encoding is PD dot get underscore dummies encodes the object or categorical encoding in binary encoding yes will be assigned one and no will be assigned and also additional columns or variables is pandas get dummies is another type of encoding which is used wherein it uses binary encoding in binary encoding in python S is assigned 1 and no is assigned 0. By default, across Python, across R, binary encoding, S will be no, uh, S will be 1, no will be 0. Alphabetical order. Now, what this get dummies will do is, it will create two additional columns, gender underscore F. It will create a new column called gender underscore F and also creates gender underscore M, comma, 1, comma, 0, comma 1 comma 1 1 comma 0 comma 0 for gender underscore m 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 1 comma 1 so and then it will delete it will delete the original column and keeps two new columns gender underscore f gender underscore the original column will be deleted after encoding and one column is replaced with right one column is replaced with two columns Suppose if your column has eight levels, that means eight columns will be and the original data column will be deleted after encoding. This call, this is called dummy variable encoding. Get dummies does this. We have to use it on independent variables. All right. You have to run either label encoder or get dummies on object data or categorical data before we finalize our data for algorithm. Without doing that, you cannot run any algorithm. Got it? Data transformation. Duplicate levels or classes in categorical, you have to correct the categorical variables levels also, like this M capital male, M A L E all caps, all represents what one category called. You have these type of representations in your data. You need to correct them because each will, each will be treated as separate. So duplication of levels or categories, you have to identify them and we have to correct them with the right. This is also one of the common. The sixth one is dealing with or space in numerical. Sometimes the numerical data will be suddenly shown as object data. What happens is if the data has comma, space or dollar symbol is there, right? Then the data will become object. So what we have to do? We have to remove those string functions. We have this string or regular expression. Yeah, regex functions per correcting. So we have to remove them. Then only it will be treated as numeric data. Sometimes the dots also, full stops or dots. If it is in the middle, it will treat it as decimal. If it is at the end, if it is in between the numbers, Python will read it as decimal. It will take it as float 64. But if the dot is at the end, then it becomes a, then we have to remove those dots at the end of the numbers. Now that happens because it is, let us say, $14 
zero zero. Dot is there, but zeros are missing. Fourteen point six eight dollars, fourteen point nine five dollars. We got all the data like that. When it is fourteen point zero zero, sometimes it will come as fourteen dot. Zeros will be removed. Then we have to look at that particular instances where dot is there, and then we have to re remove them, or we need to add next to dot zeros. Got it? So these are the common challenges you will face in data where you have each of the data presents its own challenges. Extracting information identifiers or ID. Sometimes the ID or identifier, which is alphanumeric, alphanumeric means text and numbers, will, will have certain amount of codes. So we have to extract those codes and use it in our analysis. Because by default, we will remove identifiers. By default, we will delete identifiers from our data. This is also very, very, the default format is yyy iphone or slash mm iphone or slash colon mm colon ss. This is the default format of date. Most of the times date will be read as object column. We have to convert it into a date column. Formatting has to be done. Uh, we have this very interesting function nowadays, pd dot date time, which is a fully automated function. Earlier we used to do for loop, lot of things we used to do. Now we don't need to do those things. We use simple pd.2 underscore date time. Any date will be converted. New variables. We often create new variables from existing combination of multiple variables. Combination of multiple variables. We create new variables. Conversion of variable from numerical to categorical or categorical to numerical, vice versa. Conversion of variables from numerical to categorical or vice versa categorical to numerical this also have to do sometimes your numerical data is not giving you any value addition particularly in case of outliers we can convert them into categories high medium low based on condition statement if statement we can convert the numeric variable to categorical variable high medium that way we will get more information if your numerical variable is not giving the information correctly then we need to convert it into categorical. Particularly in retail data, we do that. High value customers, medium value customers, low value customers, we use them for, okay? So broadly speaking, these are the different types of data pre-processing steps we generally do. But as we go through our curriculum working with different types of data sets, we will work with different types of processing techniques. Now, these processing techniques which I talked about are exclusive for multivariate data only for multivariate data text data different reprocessing images data different reprocessing okay so we are looking at multivariate data multivariate data means numerical object and category time series data different form reprocessing natural language processing text different reprocessing so it depends the preprocessing we will study based on the data as of now we are looking at multivariate multiple variable types numeric objective and Categorical, object and category. Now, let us import our data. All of you got the data, saved it into a specific folder. Panda says PD, NumPy has this, percentage CD, 24, and data is in hackathons, big mart sales. No, no, data wrangling is interpretation, analysis. Data wrangling is for analysis, exploratory data analysis. This is pre processing. Pre processing means cleaning, all those things. Manipulation doesn't come here, manipulation comes in your EDA. Import train and test files. Import the data. Are the AC delivery in the uh, AC delivery in the but not delivered and uh, so I can choose some. Uh, are the delivery available? I can deliver the message. Okay. Are the message which is delivered and in a graal of the product and again I have called this. Okay. Sorry. You are able to got the data import. Now there are two files here. Whenever you go for competitions, hackathons, and jobathons, you'll get two files or in fact three files. Train data is complete data dependent variable which will be used in machine learning models is complete data including the dependent variable test data will not have the dependent variable the test data will not have the dependent variable and needs to be predicted using the model built on train data using the train data model you will predict the dependent variable in test data. If you see our data here, train data has 12 variables. Test data has only 11 variables. One variable which is not there in test data is the dependent variable. 
the dependent variable must be predicted using the model you built on the train data and sample submission file we copy the predictions of test data to competition side for checking the and rank so sample submission is the file which is used for uploading our predictions whatever predictions we are making on test data those predictions are copied into the sample submission file and the sample submission file will be uploaded into the competition site for checking our score and the rank so this is the uh, concept of train data test data and sample submission data so big mart train so 8523 is the data row length and 12 variables and there are missing values in two variables outlet size and item weight two variables are missing values <laughs> item weight which is less than 8523 any variable that is less than 8523 that variable will has missing values similarly outlet size 6110 right rest of all are 8523 so two variables are missing values and the last dependent variable is item outlet sales dependent variable is item outlet sales dot info 5681 is the data size and you see there is no item outlet sales at the end and missing values are there in item weight and outlet size similar columns are missing values in both the data frames big mart train dot info big mart test dot info so it's 4 o'clock you take your break for 15 minutes and we'll meet after 15 minutes okay take your tea break we'll meet after 15 minutes so in both the data frames we have uh, missing values in similar for data pre processing we need to do pre processing done on train data same must be implemented so the first, first rule of data pre processing is whatever pre processing you are doing on train data similar pre processing must be also done on test data you can't have two different approaches of pre processing on train and test it has to be same for pre processing we will combine train data and test data into a single data frame for concatenation or for pre processing you can combine the train data and test data into a single data frame for concatenation of two data frames both data frames and in same for concatenation or combining two data frames the number of columns or the number of variables must be same and also the sequence of variables must also be then only the data will concat or combine row wise concatenation concatenation row wise concatenation must be done that means first all the rows of train data will be pasted below all the rows of test data will be pasted now we have a problem here the problem is the number of columns are not the number of columns are not either delete the dependent variable in the train data or temporarily add dependent variable to test data and fill it with a single word called test temporarily add dependent variable to test data and fill it with the word called test all the cells will be test 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 so that we can use it later as a conditional statement for splitting the data back to train and test equals to test test data not equal to test will be our so we will implement the second strategy second strategy is we will temporarily add dependent variable we will temporarily add dependent variable to train data temporarily add dependent variable to test data sorry why for concatenation big mart test square bracket single quote the name of the variable should exactly match so go up copy it from here item outlet underscore sales copy the variable name exactly with no spaces no spaces before and after okay exactly copy the variable name and paste it in single quotes or double quotes is equal to and fill it with the word test so i am adding the new variable called item outlet sales in test data and filling it with the word called test filling it with the word test now we have equal number of make sure the column name exactly matches okay so copy paste from top df is equal to pd dot concat square brackets because we are giving multiple argument big mart train comma big mart test comma 
axis is equal to zero. This is a very critical argument. Axis is equal to zero is row wise concatenation. Axis is equal to one is column wise across Python. Axis zero refers to rows. Axis is equal to one refers to across Python. Axis zero is rows. Axis one is columns. Combine df dot shape. So now you can see there are 14,204 observations with 12 variables. 14,204 observations with 12 variables. For the purpose of pre-processing, we are combining the data frames into one so that we don't duplicate the task again and again. So row-wise concatenation, all the rows of train data first, below it all the rows of, so this is the process we will repeat. Whenever we work with train and test data, if the data has missing values, we will repeat this process. And most of the times when we work data, we will have missing values in both train and test. Kegel house prices, HR analytics, there are data sets uh, like wherever we see this train and test, we will we definitely have missing values. And based on the uh, cleanup, we'll concatenate the data frames, clean them, and then we we'll separate them back to normal shape. After cleaning, back to train and test. After cleaning, we'll bring them back to train and test. Now, now let us start with the cleanup process. Combine df dot dot value counts drop na is equal to false. Outlet size has missing values. What should we do with them? 4016 missing values are there. What should be the strategy? If we replace them with medium, medium becomes 8000 something, right? If we replace this missing value with medium, 8,681 something will become. That becomes a big class. If you replace it with small, again, it, this also will become 8,000 something. If we add it to high, then it also becomes 5,000 something. So we are going to distort the data. So what should be our strategy here? We cannot NAN with three levels as it will create large bias that means we are creating a new category called because if we add it to the existing levels a bias will be created to avoid it we are going to add replace it with the word missing and a new category will be created called missing that's the safest strategy so combined df dot outlet size is equal to combined df dot outlet size dot fill na so I'm filling with the word missing. Now, if I run the previous command one more time, now you can see the missing values are replaced with the word. If you run the previous command one more time, you can see the missing values are, the nans are replaced with the word missing, okay? All of you got this? So you run the previous value counts again, the NAN should be replaced with the word missing. Though. So the function for missing values is fill NA. Fill NA is a function which you can use for filling the missing values, fill NA. Combine df dot item weight dot describe. So describe, you see the count 11,765. The actual count is how much? 14,204. That remaining 3,000 or 2,600 are missing values. Weight is a numeric. Weight is a numeric. So what should be the imputation? Mean or median? Now the mean is 12.79. Median is? 12.60. Both are closer to one another. Both are closer, right? Mean is 12.79, median is 12.60. So we can use any one of them because both of them are closer. If there is a huge difference between mean and median, we should always use. If there is a big difference between mean and median, we should always use, right? Here we will use mean. Combine df dot item is equal to combine df dot item weight dot fill na combine df dot item weight dot mean dot mean and run the previous command you will see 14204 now you see the values are 14204 that means there are no missing values earlier it was 11765 right now we have filled it with mean fill and a combined df item weight dot mean so in the back end it will calculate the mean and replace that mean value with the missing value okay so now we got 14204 if you want median, simply say dot median. It will replace it with median. You can type in one straight line. Mean is a function, so you should have brackets. Run it again. Go back and run it again. Run the previous cell. That's all. The next variable is combined df dot item fat content dot value counts drop na is equal to false. 
So what do you see here? Duplicate levels. There are actually two levels only. Low fat multiple times, regular one time. So we have to correct them into single level. Let us first correct low fat. Combined year dot item fat content is equal to combined year dot item fat content dot replace. Now there is a function called replace. In replace, first you need to give what needs to be replaced and second you give what is the replacement. What is to be replaced? Second is what is the replacement? Here what is the replaced? What is to be replaced? LF and low fat has to be replaced. So replace open bracket square bracket first LF is one replacement. Second one is low space and then what is the replacement? Capital L low capital F fat. So these two should be replaced with the original level of so I run the previous command one more time. Now you can see they have been replaced with the word low fat. In dot replace first you need to give what is the pattern that to be replaced? We have to replace LF and low fat. What is the replacement? Capital L low, capital F fat. So you can see here multiple arguments were given in square brackets. In one go, we have replaced them. We will do the same thing for reg. Combine DF dot item fat content is equal to combine DF dot item fat content dot replace reg has to be replaced with regular. Simple replacement reg with will replace the reg with. Now I will run the previous command again. Now you can see we exactly got two levels. Initially LF is there, low fat is there. So these we will replace with the word low and fat. Similarly reg with regular. Now we will get them to normal levels. In e-commerce data, retail data, this is one of the common process. Name of the category, shirts. We can do that, but for that you have to write a loop. You need to have Python programming background for that. So we have to write a program first to identify duplicate levels. Then we have to write uh, two loops for two different. So why to do that? Replace is already written there. So use the function. Once you give this to the Python uh, for deployment guys, they will do it. They have their headache. Python programming guys will do it, but they will not touch the functions. It has to be put into one single uh, loop or a code. They will do it. Python programming guys will do it. Data corrupt type. So, See, debugging is you have to go to the point where you created the previous data frame. From there onwards, you have to get the data back. Once your data is corrupted, you have to go to the previous point where the data frame is created. That's why we constantly name the data frames to create a point. Okay. These co constant points help us to retrieve data. If you make any mistake, we'll go to the previous point where we created the data frame. From there onwards, you have to run all the cells. But before running all the cells, correct the error. First, correct the error. Go to the point where the data frame is created and then run all the you will get the thing because see these pre-processing commands you should not run multiple times if you run it multiple times it will overwrite the okay so you have to be very careful when you are doing the pre-processing steps after fat content next variable is visibility combine df dot item visibility dot describe so there is no problem with this variable no missing values nothing all the variable visibility is in visibility score whether it is in front mode score back less score or let us look at the data types we will study the variables in groups item type is object right so we will do item mrp only one numeric variable is there combined here dot item mrp dot describe this also no missing values nothing all the values are in now we have other columns which are all object which are in object format combined here dot columns item type is object of obj calls is equal to square bracket outlet identifier and outlet size location type and type these are the object calls we need to study the argument is frequency 
is equal to combined year square bracket call dot value underscore counts drop na is equal to false. So you can see for each iteration, the call value will change. In the first iteration, the call value will be item type. Second iteration, the call value will be identifier. Second iteration size. Likewise, you can see the outputs. Item type, different types of items we have. No missing values. Outlet identifiers. We have different types of outlet identifiers. No missing values. Outlet size, medium, missing, small and high. Outlet size, tire 1, uh, outlet location, tire 1, tire 2 and tire 3. Outlet type, grocery store, supermarket type 1, type 2, type 3. You can see, right, value counts of different variables in one single output. This also you need to remember. So when you have, when you're dealing with, this is only 12 variables, right? In reality, you'll deal with hundreds of variables. So constantly we will use, when I do regular expressions, that time also I'll tell you how to select variables with specific alphabet or with specific name, like that also we can select. So the names of the columns will help us to do multi-variable selections in one go. And then we can plot them as, uh, here we are calculating the value counts, each variable using a for loop. The argument is same, dot variable name, dot function name. This is the core argument, right? This is the core, core argument. Same thing we are using here, right? See, data frame name, dot variable name, dot function value counts. Instead of doing it, Repeatedly again and again, we put it into a data frame name, square bracket, column iterator, dot function name. Same thing. Instead of column name, we gave the column iterator. Instead of column name, we have given the column iterator. See here, we have given the square bracket call. Square bracket call means it iterates. Same function what we are using, that we put it into a loop. And print is to see the output. Print function is for seeing the output. If you don't give the print function, you will not get the output. It will store the output in the back end. Can we move forward, guys? Any doubts? Anybody has any problems? Please feel free to ask. I will come and correct them. Right? Don't hesitate. Combine dear dot item identifier. We have the first column, item identifier. So these are alpha numeric codes. These are alpha numeric. Now, if you see the first two letters, they seem to represent a code. The first two letters seem to represent the code because FDA, FDN, FDX. The third is changing. The third alphabet is changing. But if you look at the first two alphabets, if you want, you can look at more, more of them. If you look at the first two alphabets, they are constant. The third alphabet is changing, right? That means we have to look at the first two alphabets as a potential. Now we will extract them and put them into a new column. We will extract those product codes into a new variable called item code. I'll create a new variable called item code, which will extract the first two letters of the item identifier. First two letters, because that looks like a constant code. The third letter onwards, it's changing, right? So we, we have to look at the first two letters. So combine dear square bracket single quotes or double quotes, item underscore code, the new variable name. The new variable name is item underscore code is equal to combine dear dot item identifier dot apply x colon x square bracket zero colon three. Like I told you, Python starts with and outer value will be ignored. So if you want first two alphabets to be selected, you have to give three. So combine dear dot item code dot value counts drop an A is equal to false. Zero colon two. Achha, 0, 1, right? Okay, okay, my mistake. 2 is 0 and 1. Splitting. X will be splitted as 0, colon 2. String split. So, we have three categories. Food, non-consumables, drinks. There are three categories. FD refers to, NC represents to non-consumables, like detergents, and DR represents to, so there are three categories of, first two letters of item identifier column we are extracting as item code. A new column is created based on the existing column called item identifier. The new column will have the first two letters or the first two characters of item identifier. And the name of the new column is item underscore code. Item underscore code is a new column created from item identifier. So this is creation of new variable. We created a new variable from existing variable. We have created a new variable from existing 
variable. Similarly, we have a variable called outlet establishment year. In which year the outlet year was established. Now we, we can use that variable and calculate the outlet age. We can create a new variable called outlet age as of 2022. Create a new variable underscore age underscore establishment underscore year. So combine year underscore age is equal to 2022 minus combined year dot outlet establishment. Here we are creating a categorical variable. Now we are creating a numeric variable. So we have created a categorical variable from existing variable. We also created a numeric variable from existing variable. In data analysis and data process, we constantly create new variables. All right. Now let us look at our data transformation. Our dependent variable is mixed type, both numeric and object. So we'll do it later. We'll study the dependent variable later, item outlet sales. First, we'll focus on independent variables. Now, if you look at our info, we have both numeric data and object data. That means we have to split our data into numeric and because transformation is different on both the types of. So let us print the columns, combine df dot columns. Print the columns, combine df dot columns. Now, what are the numeric calls? Calls is equal to square bracket. Combine DF, slicing, subsetting, double square bracket. Item weight is numerical. Item visibility is numerical. Item MRP is numerical. Outlet age. Object calls is equal to combine DF, double square bracket. Item fat content, copy paste. Outlet identifier, outlet size, location type, outlet type. And the last one, item port. No, no, establishment here, we have created outlet age. No? We, we have created outlet age from establishment here. So I'm not taking that variable. We have created item code from identifier. So we are not taking that variable because we have extracted information. We are no longer useful now. So the numeric calls and object calls. Print the columns and copy paste the column names. Don't type them. Here you can have spaces after comma also because what is there in inverted commas is what we need. Control C, control V, the column names. Num calls dot head. So what do you see from here? Data is in multiple mathematical units. One is in hundreds, the other is in uh, decimals, the other one age is in tens. Uh, weight is also somewhere in uh, decimals and tens. So we need to scale the we need to scale the data. So first we will do standard scaler. For our learning process, we will implement all the scalings. We will first implement on the numeric data standard scaler. What is standard scaler? Z score. X minus mean divided by standard deviation. Each column mean is calculated. Each column standard deviation is calculated and it will take the each observation. So 9.30 minus item weight mean divided by item weight standard deviation. It will do it for all the observations like this and calculates Z scores. We call this as standardization. Standardization will give you both positives and negative values because there will be some values above mean, some values will be below mean. So from <clears throat> SK learn dot preprocessing from SK learn dot preprocessing import standard scalar. We will give a short name to the function. Scalar is equal to standard scalar null brackets num calls underscore scale. Oh, sorry, or let us say, or let us say std underscore scale. Standard scale is equal to scalar dot fit underscore transform okay it's an array like i told you now when you do any transformation or computation the data structure will stay change from data frame to arrays arrays or lists right from whenever do you do any transformation or computation on data it will change to arrays so we will have to change it back to data frame pd dot data frame scale comma columns is equal to name of the variables also we have to give dot columns conversion of the arrays because whenever you do any transformation or when you do any computation the output will be numpy arrays the output will be numpy arrays that has to be converted to data frame you can use them directly but we, we have to follow the process we are using only pandas data frames for so it's better to have data frames now you can do the head function dot head now you can see the values are all scaled to a single range a specific range all the values have been scaled 
and we also have negative as well as positive values because some observations will be above mean some observations will be below x minus mean na numerator so that's why they ask you in interviews also why do standard scalars generate negative values because as per the formula there will be observations above mean as well as below mean the numerator is x minus mean we will do this calculations in excel also when we study the distance based algorithms k nearest neighbor algorithm and then uh, k mean algorithm because when you are using distance based algorithm when we are using distance based algorithms scaling is must from sk learn dot pre processing min max min max is equal to min max scalar null brackets num calls underscore dot hit underscore transform underscore min max is equal to 3d dot data frame num calls underscore min max comma columns is equal to dot columns num calls underscore min max dot so if you see from the output there are no negative values all values are between 0 and 1 0 to 1 with no negative values only positive 0 to 1 only positive values each columns min x minus x min divided by x max minus x min the next one is a robust scalar when we have outliers extreme outliers are there it is better to use robust robust is equal to scalar null brackets underscore robust is equal to robust dot with underscore transform num calls underscore robust is equal to pd dot data frame num calls underscore robust comma columns is equal to num calls dot underscore robust this is based on quartiles x minus q2 divided by q3 minus first import the function give a small name to the function it is always fit underscore transform for transforming the data if you are using resampling techniques fit underscore resample right so fit underscore transform for transforming for resampling fit underscore resample and then give the data frame as input in brackets and whenever you do transformation or computation the data will be converted into arrays you have to convert it back to data frame we'll stop it here and continue in the next session right next session we will do the further things you know, today we have done a lot of concepts you just understand them anybody has any errors or mistakes you can come to me i'll solve them or you call me i'll come to you and we'll solve them but this process you have to do for every jobathon or hackathon or when you are doing any placement process when you get data they will send you like this train data or test data or they will ask you to split i will show you how to split train and test also 70 30. generally they are sending the data with train and test separated so you have to follow this process combine them then go by step by step missing values then the transformations and all whichever is needed you do it now how to decide on transformation import c bond as sns sns c bond is a visualization right sns dot so we got the box plots of num call see all the three plots mrp is visibility item weight and outlet age c bond is part of matplotlib it's a purely visualization library c bond is part of matplotlib this is our original data sns dot box plot look at the standard scales there is a change in the plots right item visibility now got outliers earlier item visibility was congested to one place right the box is also not visible that means it is so positively skewed to one side right now look at it after scaling how the data has changed you get outliers these are the outliers black black dots are all outliers but the box is visible now right similarly sns dot box plot num calls underscore min max see min max even you can see it even there is a bigger change in the boxes but item visibility still has outliers but they are less or similar outliers are there but look at the other two boxes 0 to 1 the scale is 0 to 1 whereas here the scale is negative to the last one sns dot box plot is putting all boxes with item visibility still has right the box plots you can see so you can do multiple box plots using c bond using c bond you can do multiple box plots sns dot box plot num calls original data then num calls underscore standard scale underscore min max underscore robust you can compare the change what is happening in our data so the client will ask you each scalar what is the effect so you have to give these plots and you have to explain what is the changes happened by using each of the scalar c1 as sns and you can plot them